Okay, so let us continue with the double CI. So, yesterday we did for the monomer hydrogen molecule. So, I hope you remember that we derived the form for the E correlation as E correlation in terms of E correlation itself. So, that was important to remember. So, we had E correlation equal to K12 square, right? Is that what we derived? Yeah, the correlation minus 2 delta, right? So, if you solve this equation, it is a quadratic equation. I hope some of you have solved this equation. So, E correlation is equal to has anybody solved it? Quadratic equation is a very simple solution. It is delta minus delta square. Let me just check this one plus plus k12 square to the power half. Okay, so that is the result of the the this solution of the quadratic equation okay but 2 delta remember 2 delta was the what was 2 delta i remind you 2 delta was the diagonal element of the 2 2 bar h minus e hartree for 2 2 bar which is basically the doubly excited amplitude a doubly excited configuration sorry on this side and doubly excited co configuration on this side that was your 2 delta. So, delta is half of this okay what is used here and if you remember e, we first obtained E correlation as C times K12 where C was the coefficient for the doubly excited determinant. So, our so it was 1 1 bar plus C 2 2 bar. Note again what we are discussing hydrogen molecule in minimal basis. So, this is what is called hydrogen molecule in minimal basis. Okay. Minimal basis means there are only two orbitals, that is exactly what you have learned sigma g and sigma u. Remember when you do MO theory, you have 1s a and 1s b, two atomic orbitals LCAO, it gives you sigma g and sigma u. So, you have two atomic orbitals to start with you do a hartree fock you get two molecular orbital. So, this is what we are calling 1, this is what we are calling 2. So, 1 is the bonding molecular orbital sigma g and 2 is the antibonding sigma u, right. So, your hartree fock is this. So, this is your hartree fock which is 1 1 bar and your DCI determinant will be 2 2 bar, correct. So, that is exactly, so it is a very simple problem that we are, we are doing beyond hartree fock when you do DCI. So, our wave function then is 1 1 bar plus a constant times 2 2 bar, correct. So, this is my Hartree Fock. So, 2 2 bar is the other configuration which I am doing. So, now we have to calculate C and put it back E correlation is C times K 1 2 put it back here. So, this is the result that you get, okay. So, that is what we showed last time. I, I did a solution for C, remember the double CI equation, okay. So, what we want to show what happens to the two hydrogen molecules now. So, now this is for a single hydrogen molecule, two hydrogen molecules which are far apart. So, we are discussing the case of a non interacting dimer. So, we are again doing a DCI. DCI in the minimal basis. So, for each hydrogen molecule, I have two molecular orbitals 1 and 2 which I am calling sigma g. So, now what I will do 
is to rewrite this diagram saying that this is hydrogen 1a, hydrogen this is 2a. So, this is for the H2 molecule which I am calling molecule A. Actually, they are same hydrogen molecule, but just to distinguish the coordinates will be different. So, I am calling molecule A and then similarly for H2B, I will have 1B and 2B. Okay. At a non-interacting regime, their energies will be exactly identical. So, they are degenerate okay. at a non-interacting regime. Now, I am doing a Hartree Fock first at the non, everything that I am doing is for the non-interacting regime. So, I am not discussing what happens when these two hydrogen molecules come apart. Of course, then there will be interaction between these and they will be shift, they will no longer remain degenerate. So, I will have two molecular orbitals, they will have different results. But at the non-interacting regime, the Hartree Fock is very simple, two electrons here, two electrons here, you agree? It's H4 system, so four electrons in 1A and 1B. Is it a, okay? So this will be the Hartree Fock for the dimer. So psi Hartree Fock will be 1A, 1A bar, 1B, 1B bar. Remember, of course, everything is a determinant. I'm just writing the diagonal. Okay. So again, I have already explained that whatever, when I am writing without bar, it means alpha spin orbital is attached. If I am writing with bar, beta spin orbital is attached. 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B are spatial orbitals per se. But when I am using them inside the determinant, they have an alpha and beta attached. Because determinants cannot be written in terms of spatial orbitals. It has to be always in terms of spin orbitals. So that is my psi heart report. Now I have to discuss what is the doubly excited configuration. So how many doubly excited configurations are possible? So now start thinking. So these two electrons can of course be excited here, that is one. Or these two electrons can be excited here. These two electrons can be excited here. These two electrons can be excited here or one can go there, etc., etc. But first let us understand that since they are non-interactive, any interaction between a dimer, between a monomer A and B is actually going to become 0. Because if you calculate the integral, the integral will become 0. So physically, one can actually rigorously show, but I hope physically you understand that I cannot push an electron from here to there because they are infinitely apart. So the only possibilities are actually the interaction here and interaction here. Okay? So what becomes, what is now my total wave function, phi 0. 1a, 1a bar, 1b, 1b bar. Again, I am writing in the intermediate normalization. So, this is the Hartree Fock, right? I told you 4 electron Hartree Fock plus this gets excited here, but this remains here because it is only doubly excited, right? So, then this will become 1, 2a, 2a bar, 1b, 1b bar, coefficient c. Okay, we can say C1 plus C2, then I push this here, this remain here. So, 1A, 1A bar, 2B, 2B bar, period, correct? These are the only two doubly excited configurations that are possible because anything else will include excitations from here and there. Yeah, there is possibility of one here and one here, but we are talking of a wave function which is totally singlet. So that is the reason we are eliminating that and we are doing DCI anyway. So huh? singlet, singlet. So that is the reason we are not considering this. That will count as DCI, that will count as DCI, but not DCI for the monomer, not DCI for the monomer, but DCI for the dimer. So, if you are considering only the singlet function, this is all that you will have, okay. So, this is a, a special case, but it is all right for all discussion, this is okay. Because that is that is actually going to complicate the matter even more, if I take a singles here, singles here. Yes. It does not matter, but finally, yeah, but finally if you look at H4, it is a doubly excited. I am looking at H4 with reference to 1A, 1A bar, 1B, 1B bar, okay. 
So, we restrict up to here because the discussion is very clean here. The even before I actually do the calculation, first I can recognize one important fact that the C1 must be equal to C2 by symmetry point that we are trying to say that size consistency means when the systems are very far apart, the energy should be some. Whether the what is the linear combination? Yeah, that is okay. I am not I am not exciting between A and B. Excitation here and that is okay, that is all right. That is not a problem. Overall system exists, Hamiltonian exists. The point that I am trying to say, if I solve a DCI for that Hamiltonian, it should be twice the DCI energy of the monomer, which is not the case. That is what I will show. So, that is the reason DCI is not a size consistent method. Any size, I yesterday I told any size consistent method must give this result that if you have A and B, if I calculate the energy when A and B are far apart, the result should be energy of A plus energy of B. That is physically intuitive and correct. But I will show that the DCI does not give this, whereas Hartree Fock for this system will give actually. That is very easy to see. So, let me, so let me go ahead. See, without even doing the calculation, you can actually show that C1 is equal to C2 because of symmetry because both the hydrogen molecules are identical, both of them are hydrogen. So, there is no reason to distinguish between this determinant and this determinant. It is just either on this hydrogen or this hydrogen, there is no interaction between them anyway. So, actually C1 would be equal to C2 and then I can set up the CI matrix just as we have done it. So, first one is 0, then I will have Hartree Fock with one of the doubly accelerated configurations, right, in this row, if you remember. So, what will be that? So, I have 1 a, 1 a bar, 2 a, 2 a bar, h, then any one of the determinant to take. Let us say 2 a, 2 a bar, sorry, 1 b, 1 b bar, yeah. 1 b, 1 b bar, then I say 2 a, 2 a bar, 1 b, 1 b bar. So, I am exciting this, correct? So, this will be one of the elements here. You remember the elements how to write Hartree Fock with all doubly accelerated configuration in row and column, right? What is the matrix element for this? Remember, this is again one determinant with another determinant where two of them are different. So, only those two will come. So, it will become 1A, 1A bar anti symmetrized 2A, 2A bar. If you now remember, we exactly encountered the same one for the monomer except that that time we did not call A, just call 1, 1 bar, 2, 2 bar, anti symmetrize. We did spin integration, one of these survived, one did not survive. The one that survived was 1, 1, 2, 2 in special orbitals, which is just 1, 1, 2, 2. Either A or, A or B does not matter now and that was called K1, T. correct? So, that is exactly what is going to come here, 0, K1, 2. And this one is automatically K12, right? I do not have to do it again. When I do the other one, 1A, one 1A one bar is identical. Again, it is 2B, 2B bar. So, I will get exactly the same integral, just as the same integral as the monomer, right? So, I can fill the column, first column K12, K12. And then you have 2 delta, 2 delta. That is also very easy to see because if I calculate this integral between the, the two of the uh, determinants, which are actually identical determinants like this, like I did here, 2, 2 bar H minus E Hartree Fock, I am doing exactly the similar calculation here, okay. So, so I will get exactly the same result as 2 delta. And then you will have some numbers. This is Hartree Fock, this is doubles, this is the one, one of the doubles. So, du doubles with itself and doubles with the other doubles. So, that means now I have to take this and this. Quite clearly, this is 0. I hope you can see this because 2A, 2A bar, 1B, 1B bar, 1A, 1A bar, 2B2, all four spin orbitals are different between these two determinants. So, between one of the doubly excited determinants, to the another doubly excited determinant, the matrix element is 0, 
because I have already told that if you have more than two occupation difference, Slater rule says it is 0. Is it clear to all? So then, so this is the one of the doubly excited row, right? So the first one is K12 with Hartree fog, one with itself is 2 delta, and then matrix element with the other one. So it is a 3 by 3 matrix now. This is going to become 0. This is also going to become 0, same way. So this is my Hamiltonian matrix. Okay, for this, and then I will have 1, C, C. Actually, you can write C1, C2 and show that C1 is equal to C2 because you will get identical equation. In fact, I have assumed it, but please remember if I ask you to show, you should be able to show that it assume C1 and C2 are different, you will get exactly identical equation for C1 and C2. So, they have to be equal. But anyway, I know this, so I am just kind of doing a shortcut. So, E correlation 1, C, C. Okay. Remember now there are three determinants. So there will be two, one C, C. So these are the matrix, these are the coefficients 1, C1, C2, which are equal. So I have written 1, C, C. If they are, if you do not assume equal, anyway they will come equal, no problem. So if I now do the same multiplication exactly in the same way, instead of diagonalizing by Kramer's rule, let me write it down. So again 0 into 1, k1 into c, k1 in, k1 2 into c. So I have got 2, so what is my E correlation? E correlation is 2 times k1 to c, beautiful. If you, if you remember here for the monomer, let me highlight, for the monomer it was E correlation c times k1 2 and here the E correlation is 2 times k1 2 into c. This looks beautiful actually. So just from here, you would argue that this is all right, this size consistent, except that we do not know the value of C yet. If the value of C is identical to here, then of course it is size consistent. But this will be a different C because I am solving a different problem. I only assume that the C1 is equal to C2, but I cannot assume that this C is same as this C. Okay? So I have to actually calculate the C. So we will go to the next equation to calculate the C. So second equation, only one of the equation I will take. K12 into 1 plus 2 delta into C, right? K12 plus 2 delta into C equal to E correlation times C. So K12 into 1 plus 2 delta into C, 0 into C equal to E correlation times C. And of course, the other one will be exactly identical, 2 delta C equal to E correlation C. So I can actually calculate from here again the value of C and put it back there. So your C would be K12 divided by E correlation minus 2 delta. So your equation here would become then E correlation equal to 2 times K12 square divided by E correlation minus 2 delta, right? Just as I did here, it is exactly same except that it has been multiplied by 2. So you think everything is still fine except that now if you iterate and converge the equation, quadratic equation, solutions will be different. Solutions will not give you 2 times this. See, this E correlation looks 2 times K12 square by E correlation minus 2 delta. Here also you have E correlation equal to K12 square divided by E correlation minus 2 delta, but unfortunately the result of E correlation will be different. Just solve this quadratic equation, then you will see what you will get, okay? So let me solve this quadratic equation. And the solution of this quadratic equation will give you just like there E correlation equal to delta, note here, delta minus delta square plus 2K12 square to the power half. Unfortunately, these two will actually come here inside the square root. That means this is no longer equal to 2 times this. 2 has come inside the square root instead of multiplying by the whole thing. 
although the iterative equation looks that it is still two times okay the 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 coefficient is identical e correlation is exactly two times okay but however the result when I put it back because C is dependent on E correlation, that is the problem here. So, to say that this C is identical to that C is actually wrong. The form is only identical. The actual value is no longer identical because the E correlation is different. I do not know this. I know this only after I substitute here. And then solve the quadratic equation, I will get a different equation. So, I will just kind of uh, now read, write all the equations in one place. So, this is the monomer. So, what we have got now is the for the dimer, the result is the following that I get still first result is E correlation is equal to 2 times K1 to C and C equal to exactly the same result that we got here K12 divided by E correlation minus K1. Note this equation and this equation with the equation here and uh, I have not written the C here, but C is exactly same here. So, I can write the C here K12 by E correlation minus K. Note that everything looks identical at this point, everything looks identical that it is just two times because C looks identical to this. However, when I substitute this, I get E correlation equal to now, instead of k12 square c, I get 2 times k12 square c. That is the only difference divided by E correlation minus 2. Note that if this E correlation was not here, something else was here which is a constant, this would have been actually 2 times. But because of the fact that the E correlation depends on E correlation, I have to make an iterative solution and the result of the iterative solution gives me completely, so if you can solve the quadratic equation and this will give you E correlation equal to delta minus delta square plus 2 k 1 2 square to the power half. Please do this quadratic equation solution yourself. You will see that the result is not 2 times this. However, everything look 2 times this monomer result. If you look at the monomer and the dimer, everything look 2 times till now except when I converge this, I get a different result. <coughs> And that is essentially the problem of DCI that the 2 comes in, but it does not come in as a multiplying factor here, but it actually comes in inside the square root. Okay. And hence the correlation energy is not 2 times the correlation energy of the monomer. Obviously, you agree that that value is not 2 times this. In fact, it is close to square root 2 times if at all, if I expand this properly because of the square root. So, this is a very subtle point because in the beginning people did not realize because the forms looked exactly identical, even the coefficient is same provided this correlation energy is identical. Okay? So, you put it back here, looks all right, still looks all right till you actually iterate. And, and this is the this is the real problem of uh, the uh, the all the linear expansion and uh, the mathematics is very interesting actually what do you get until you actually converge you you can't you can't put any bet with everything depends on this guy right when I converge I get this different which means c is actually different coefficient is actually different everything is different okay, so that's the that is the message that the correlation energy is not size consistent. So, essentially I can say that for DCI correlation energy is not size consistent. I hope all of you have got this. Uh, if you are not convinced you can do C1 and C2, you will see you will get identical equation for C. So, the exactly same equation you will get for the C. Okay? So, that you can anyway do it. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I am going to make that comment now. So, true. So, the problem has come because of linear expansion unless it is a full CI. In fact, this same problem I can now solve in full CI, which means for monomer I take only doubles, for dimer I take up to quadruples, let us say only doubles and quadruples. 
forget about the rest of the singles and triples which will actually generate more than the singlet functions. Then you will see identical results will get. So, only for full CI energy will exactly in fact, there is another exercise to show that that do a DQ CI for this and show that now the energy is exactly twice the monomer energy. The reason is that the full CI is exact. So, very simply to understand all exact theories must be size consistent ok, because that is what it is otherwise there is no point doing theory. If my exact theory also is not size consistent then the theory is wrong. I am not even I am not even theorizing correctly right. My theory itself is wrong, structure is wrong, but here it is simply coming because it is not an exact theory ok. For monomer it may be exact, but for dimer it is not exact. And I will show you what is missing now, why it is not exact. Yes. Yeah, but it does not matter, it will make compli more complication. I mean, that will essentially mean that there will be more terms here. So, that will not help. I mean, I have, I can, I mean, here I am not taking singles anyway, and here you are going to take two singles amplitude, that will even make more complicated. There will be another set of coefficients. So, there is no way correlation energy will become two times. So, essentially the result that we are saying is that, so the result that we have reached is that DCI is not size consistent, that is important. So, I have these two results in front of you, this, this and finally this or this. Okay, so, as you can see that this is not two times this. Presumably, when the energy is not two times the monomer, the wave function will also not be a product obviously. So, now I am going to physically show why the wave function is not product. I have not discussed the wave function directly except that I wrote the CI wave function. So, again I go back to the same diagram that I did 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B. I write the monomer phi 0 monomer, let me call it 1. This 1 is just to indicate that it is for the monomer, 1, 1 bar. So, what is the CI 1A 1A bar plus C 2A 2A bar, correct? This is for the monomer A. I write this for the monomer B. What would be the monomer B separately? 1B 1B bar plus C 2B 2B bar. You agree? I have written the CI functions DCI for each of the monomers separately. I have to show that when I write the DCI function for the whole in the non-interacting regime, it is not a product of this. It will not be a product obviously. So, I am going to show this and it is very easy to see this actually and that is the part of the problem. So, when I now write DCI for the monomer, D, uh, DCI for the dimer sorry, DCI for the dimer, let me call this 2 phi 0, 2 means there are 2, 2 n mar, 2 mar. So, it is a dimer of the, so 2 phi 0. So, what is the result? It is 1 a, 1 a bar, 1 b, 1 b bar, right? plus some coefficient c or k, this may be different, let us say c 1, 1 a, 1 a bar, 2 b, 2 b bar, I have excited this plus some c 2 which is same as c 1 now, 2 a, 2 a bar, 1 b, 1 b bar, correct. So, that is exactly the c i I wrote. I just wanted to distinguish between this C and this C, that is all, because they are actually not same, I know this, ok. So, now what I have to show is that this wave function is not the product of this wave function and that is the reason it is not size consistent, because the energy is should be some wave function should be product. So, we will take a product of these two functions. So, let me now do 1 phi 0 a into 1 phi 0 b. Now, remember when I am taking the product, 
it should be anti symmetrized product, which means the entire product should be anti symmetrized. Okay. So, that is a that is a simple thing, you do not have to worry what is that A. So, all I have to take is this into this in an anti symmetrized manner. So, what is the first term? This into this. What will that give me? That will give me the 4 electron determinant 1A, 1A bar, right, and 1B, 1B bar. So, essentially I am taking the product of the 2 dimer Hartree-Fock. So, that will be generate me a 4 electron Hartree-Fock after anti symmetrize Then I take a product of this into this. So, I will get 1A, 1A bar with a coefficient 1A, 1A bar and then 2B, 2B bar, right, which is actually one of my doubly excited determinants. And then I will get another C, C of the other one, 1B, 1B bar, 2A, 2A bar, which is the other doubly excited determinant, okay. At least the determinants have come, the coefficients are different. But then very importantly, there is a fourth term, which I cannot avoid, which is C square. C square that is remember this 2A 2A bar 2B 2B bar. So, if you now compare this with the dimer, you can quite clearly see why it is no longer can no longer be a product. Even if C1 is equal to C, you will never generate this term. This term comes out of a quadruple C i. You have to actually, it is a 4 electron excitation, right. You have to excite 2 electrons from here as well as from here. And that cannot be done by DCI of dimer because dimer, DCI can never generate quadruple excitation. So, that is a problem. So, how do I generate this? To make a product, I must do a quadruple C i here. But then again, quadruple C i is not good enough because my coefficient has to be square. What is the diff, what is the CI? CI is a linear expansion, all right. Just for this particular problem, because quadruples double CI is a full CI, you will eventually get exact results if you do a DQCI here. But if you take let us say 10 hydrogen molecule, then DQCI is also approximate. So, at no point of time, if you if you have a n number of H2 non-interacting molecules, any approximate CI will be size inconsistent because of this fact that you can never generate this C square term. And whatever level you truncate here and whatever level you truncate here cannot be same because product term always contains higher excitations. So, there are two problems. One is that the degree of excitations is different. Second is that the coefficients come nonlinearly, okay. So, there are two essentially two different problems. So, so as we, we actually see that the wave function of the dimer is not a, an anti symmetrized product, a monomer. right for this hydrogen molecule. So, two important reason that we understand here is that, so let me write specifically in DCI. So, what is the two reasons? One is that product of the monomer contains a quadruply excited configuration. Remember, monomers are done at DCI. Do not forget, the monomers are DCI, but when I take their product, there is a quadruply excited configuration. So, that is a problem. And then the, whereas the dimer, because I am doing DCI for both. 
So, dimer DCI does not have this configuration. So, so basically you if you want to do a CI at the same level of excitations, it is always going to have a problem because product will always contains higher level like doubles into doubles is quadruple right. So, product will always contain higher level. So, this will become a serious problem. Further note that the product term contains quadruply excited configuration. in a non-linear manner. I will just make this statement in a non-linear manner. So, you understand what is non-linear because this is C square. So, so the whole spirit of CI anyway will not work. If you want the dimer to have the product term of course, when I say product term it is a product of the monomer I mean that is understood in the context. So, this product term contains this quadruply excited configurations and its amplitude is actually C square. So, if it is C square, it cannot even be described by CI because CI describes only linear excitations, configurations which are mixed in a linear manner. Is this clear? Yes, any question? If there is any question? Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is a difficult point, but I think you have to understand. So, the question that later we will have to ask what kind of wave function will achieve this? Very interestingly, perturbation theory achieves this. I, I am not going to make a statement here, but MP2 achieves this in a very different way. Because MP2, you do not first construct wave function, you construct the energy and perturbation order and it somehow achieves this. That is the beauty about the perturbation. But if I think in terms of wave function, just like I am thinking in CI, that I write wave function as a combination of determinants and then I want to do this, it is not working. So, what kind of at strategy will actually lead me to this, this, uh, this, uh, 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 this particular property of size consistence, and that is where I will mention the that the the couple cluster when I come that the couple cluster actually achieves this in a very normal manner because couple cluster is not a linear expansion; it's actually an exponential expansion. So that's the real reason that it happens, and I think I can emphasize the this here. If I have a linear expansion like one plus c. A. This is C A is very generic monomer A into 1 plus C B, right? That is what is happening. 1 is Hartree-Fock, C is the doubly excited determinant. You will get 1 plus C A plus C B plus C A into C B, right? So, when I do dimer, I am also doing only up to here because it is a linear expansion. When I am doing monomer, it is a linear expansion, but its product has this quadratic term which I am not able to take in the linear expansion. So, if you think mathematically anything like 1 plus x or 1 plus c will not work. What would of course work is the following if I had exponential c a instead of 1 plus c a and an exponential c b instead of 1 plus c b then you can see the product the product is nothing but exponential C A plus C B, right. So, if I take an exponential function for this instead of linear an exponential for this an exponential for this where my C is C A plus C B that is no problem, but exponentialization of that then the product rule satisfies that is mathematics. So, exponential x into exponential y provided the commute is exponential x plus y. They are numbers, no problem. But if you have 1 plus x into 1 plus y, that is not 1 plus x plus y. So, let us say this is my function in the computer. So, this would be my function for the monom dimer x plus y exponential. Sort. If it is 1 plus x is a function, this will become 1 plus x plus y. You can quite clearly see that this is not equal. 
because you have additional term which is x into y. So, this is actually mathematics. So, mathematically I know that if I can actually go instead of a linear expansion an exponential expansion, exponential is product separable because e to the x e to the y is e to the x plus y. Okay? And this is actually the genesis of the couple cluster method. You know, I will come back much later. Right now I am just making a point here why it does not work for the CI. So, you can at least appreciate why an exponential will work that is all I wanted to tell you why 1 plus 1 plus C will never work. Okay? So, if your dimer has the coefficient which is this plus this then that is the only function that will work. But be that as it may right now we come back to CI and just make this point that there are two important points to discuss. One is that the product of monomer contains a quadruply excited whereas dimer does not have. Note that this product term even if I had taken, if I would have taken as a linear expansion it would still not have worked because the product term must come with c square. So, that is why the second noting is also important because the first if you just note this it is passing the buck for the time being okay? because even if you had taken in a CI it would still not have worked. So, that is why I am saying point A is just passing the buck for the time being you are happy why it is, but the that, but there is a deeper problem, all right. However, let me again mention if for H2 dimer I do DQCI, just singlet, it is exact and hence for a completely different reason the result will be size consistent, okay. That, that point this C square will then be shown to be equal to something because it is a full CI. But if I do DQCI for a large number of n H2 molecules, then you can see the DQ is also not good enough. Because if I do DQ for D for all, D into D into D into D, you will have much more than Q, right. And then they will come also with a nonlinear term. So, it will never be exact. I mean you can do for hydrogen, if it is more than hydrogen then it is even worse. Let us say I take two benzene molecules then also the same issue will come up, right. So, either way it becomes very bad and in fact the problem become worse as 2 increases to n. So, if I go from 2 to n when n is very large the problem will actually get worse as you can immediately imagine because there will be many many terms in the product which will be missing not just quadruple. Now, there will be hextuply excited, octuply excited all will be missing dimer will only have DCI, right. So, everything will be missing unless you do again a full CI which is impossible for large n because full CI we cannot do. So, the problem actually gets only worse 